There's an old saying that claims you're only young once. But as a matter of fact, you can be young more than once. And the best way of doing that is to share the misadventures of a typical boy like Henry Aldrich. He'll take you right back to your own teenage days. The scene is the living room of Nancy Adams, one of Henry's favorite classmates. And the time is evening. Nancy, tell me honestly, what is it you like about Bill Turner? Oh, I don't know, Henry. I just like him. Don't you? Well, sure, he's all right. If you like athletes. What's the matter with athletes? Nothing. Except they're so athletic. I mean, well, well, to hear Bill Turner talk, you think he was Joe DiMaggio, the Notre Dame football team, and Gorgeous George all rolled into one. Not so loud, Henry. He might hear you. Who would he hear me? He's out in the front hall. And I like him only... Frankly, is there any way of getting rid of him? <laughs> you mean you don't like him? Well, sure, I'm crazy about him. Only... Hey, Nancy! She whiz. Nancy, did I ever tell you about the time I dove off the top of the boathouse? Oh, Bill, I didn't even know anybody could climb up that high. Oh, it's easy. And you know that flagpole down at the end of the lake? Yes. I dove off that once, too. Nancy, how's your mother? Oh, she's better, Henry. She just strained her back a little. Boy, was that some luck I had in the game Saturday. You remember when those three guys tackled me and I carried them right across the goal for a touchdown? Oh, that was just wonderful, Bill. I don't see how you stood up. Nancy, what kind of a television set is this? I don't know. Uh, Henry, could you or Bill open this window a little, please? Sure, why not? Oh, wait a minute, Henry. I'll open it. Well, that's all right, Bill. I've got it practically... Practically... Is it stuck, Henry? No, it isn't stuck. I just... Could you stand back, please, Bill? How am I in the way? I want to get some leverage. Here, Henry, let me show you how to open it. Now, look out, Bill. All I have to do is... Nancy, would you mind if I push this sofa away? No, Henry. Well, well, don't get up. I'll push you along. Mm. Along. Mm. Well, maybe if you just got up for a second, Nancy. Mm. Well, never mind the sofa. I'll just... Gee whiz, who opened that window? I did. (laughs) You know, I thought I had it started. I just should have kept at it. Anything else you want done, Nancy? Well, there's some ginger ale out in the kitchen if one of you wants... Oh, gee whiz, I'll get it for you, Nancy. You stay where you are, Bill. You sure you don't need me help lifting the bottles? You'll find everything out there on a tray, Henry. All you have to do is put some ice in the glasses. Uh, I'll be right back. Nancy, isn't there any way of getting rid of him? This evening? Sure. Bill, Henry Aldrich is one of the nice... Nancy, I'm not saying he isn't. Only, frankly... Frankly what? Well, three's a crowd... And frankly, I have crowds cheering for me every time I go out on the field. I want to be alone. Excuse me, Nancy, but is there any special way of getting your ice trays loose? Well, my mother never has any trouble, Henry. All she does is pull and they come right out. That's funny. I'll take another crack at it. Nice guy. I'd like to see him come out for football practice some afternoon. Bill, what did I tell you about sympathy and understanding? Oh, I understand, Henry. That's why I have no sympathy for him. Ah, but forget about him. What about that dance Friday night? What about it? Well, what time should I... What time should I... You know, he's going to wreck your refrigerator. (laughs) What time should I call for you? Oh, about... (laughs) Yes, Mother? No, Mother, Henry's getting some ice. I'll pick everything up, Nancy. Does your father have a hammer I could use with a screwdriver? Or a small crowbar would be even better. Henry, what's that all over your suit? It's... Well, you see, I was aiming for the ice cubes, but... Was your mother planning to have tomato juice for dinner? (laughs) There's a freshly opened can in the ice box. Oh, my goodness. Of course, if they're going out for dinner, it'll keep till tomorrow's lunch. Out of the way, Henry. I'll get the ice out. Now, wait a second, Bill. You'll need something to loosen it with. What's the matter with my hands? Some guys sure love to brag. Why, if Bill Turner... Who? Hey, who put butter on the floor? (laughs) I just took it out so I could get better leverage. Nancy, will one tray of ice be enough? 
Gee, did I loosen it that much? Nancy, I don't think you'll feel the same way about you-know-who once you get a look at your mother's kitchen. I think I better be going. Oh, Henry, do you have to? Well, I've got a lot of homework to do, and I think I better. Don't you? Well, if you have to. I, uh... I, I had a very swell evening, though. Oh, I'm awfully glad, Henry. Well, so long. You really have to go. Uh, I think I better. Aldrich, would you mind closing that door? The coach told me to keep out of draft. Oh, oh, sure. I, I didn't realize I was keeping the door open. Well, what time should I call for you Friday evening? Friday evening? Well, sure, for the dance. Henry, I didn't promise to go with you, did I? Why, sure, why, sure. You didn't? Well, I don't see how I could have. I'm going with Bill. Oh. With Bill? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Henry. I guess you must have misunderstood Hey, me. what about that door? Uh, I'll, I'll walk you out to the porch. No, no you, you go back and have your ginger ale. I can find my way, all right. Oh, I, I hope you understand, Henry. I... Oh, sure. You and Bill just go ahead and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Could you pass the toast, please? Here you are, dear. Why didn't Henry go to the dance? Well, dear, that's what I don't know. Do you remember the other evening when he came home from Nancy Adams soaking wet? When? Last week, dear. A couple of nights before the dance. He walked into the house covered with tomato juice. And Sam Henry hasn't been himself since then. Did you have a talk with him? Yes, and all he'd say was he felt dancing was a waste of time. Mother! Uh, Mary, come in here and eat your breakfast. Mother, what's this letter all about? What letter? Why, it's the silliest thing I've ever seen. It must be for Father. May I see it, please? Who's it from, Sam? From the Lionel Strong Ford Institute of Physical Development, Incorporated. <laughs> Dear Mr. Ulrich, are you a man or a mouse? <laughs> I knew all the time it wasn't for me. Yeah. No man can make his mark in the world. No man can inspire the love of a good woman unless he is willing to develop his inner potential strength in our 26-week course. Sam, what in the world is that? I don't know, Alice, but I'm fascinated. <laughs> we can give you a money-back guarantee if your chest expansion does not increase by at least two inches during the first six lessons. How many inches, Father? Keep quiet, Mary. That's just the first six lessons. <laughs> we also offer a shorter course for the busy executive, interested in only partial development. <laughs> Remember, decide now. Yours truly. Father, what's that? P.S. Reply by return mail and receive free one genuine simulated nylon tape measure, especially designed <laughs> for checking your chest development. Dear, when did you write for that? May I see the envelope, please? Father, it's addressed to Mr. Harold Aldrich. Who's he? I have no idea whether he's a man or a mouse. Well, <laughs> put the letter back in the envelope, please. It's probably for Henry. Mother, why would he want to develop? I don't know, dear. And besides, it's none of our business. Please put it back in the envelope. Well. Well, I think I'll walk to the office this morning. <laughs> Why, Sam, you haven't walked to the office in six years. Well, of course I have. I walked to... A couple of times just this last summer. It made me feel great. I'll get your top coat for you, Father. A coat? A coat? Why would I want a coat? Well, I can at least get your hat. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. Oh, leaving? Goodbye, son. Uh, goodbye. Mother, do you have any idea where my blue and white tie is? Your blue and white tie? No, dear. Now sit down and eat your breakfast. But, Mother, I've got to find it. There'll be plenty of time to find it after you've eaten. Turn around. What's the matter? I think you ought to have those shoulders on that coat taken in a little. Taken in, Mother? You just want to throw your money away? They'll be filled out in 26... I, I mean, before you know it. Henry, dear, please sit down. I want to ask you something. What about? What in the world is the trouble? The trouble? The trouble? Gee whiz, I don't know of any trouble. But you aren't yourself, dear. And when anyone speaks to you, you're way up in the air. Well, I'm not up in the air, Mother. I, I may be a little upset because I can't find my blue and white tie, but otherwise I feel fine. Then why not eat your breakfast? I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. How is Nancy Adams these days? Nancy Adams? Mother. Well, all I asked is, how is she? You see this book here, Mother? You see this book? Yes. Well, that gives you an idea of what little interest I have in Nancy Adams. What about the book? I borrowed it from her two weeks ago. Well? I'm returning. Well, that's fine. I'm returning it. I'm returning it. That's all. That's as far as I go. If you ask me whether I'd like to keep it and finish it, I'll tell her I'm not even slightly interested. Well, that's fine, dear. Now, drink your milk. You know what else? What? That's all right. Never mind. But if her folks can't afford a better icebox than the one they have... Gee, would you like Bill Turner? 
Bill Turner? I hardly know him. She is. He got a lot to learn. He just goes around. You know what he thinks? Henry, what's your ambition in life? My ambition, Mary? What do you mean? That's all. I just wondered whether you wanted to be a man or a mouse. <laughs> Mary, I haven't any time for small talk. Hey, have you seen my blue and white tie? No, but I'd love to see your chest expansion. Now, Mary. <laughs> That's what I say, Mother. But, Mother, all I was going to ask him was if he was going to take the short course of the 26-week course. Uh, Mary, will you please give Henry that letter? A letter? I don't think it's for you, though, Henry. Mary, give me that letter. Are you Mr. Harold Aldrich? Mary, you come back with that. Do you realize that's United States mail? Mary? Mother, it says right on the envelope, may be open for inspection. Mary, if you don't give me that... <laughs> oh, we won't break anything. I'm just helping Henry develop. Now, listen, Mary, you're only going to make me late for school. You want to take it with you and show it to Nancy Adams? Mary, if you breathe one word about this to her, I'll... Mary? Mary, come back down here with that. What are you writing, Henry? Henry, what are you doing? Homer, is there a class in this room next period? Sure. Henry, what are all those questions you're filling out? Nothing, Homer, nothing important. It's, it's just some information I've got to send away. Could you measure my chest just once more, please? It's pretty hard with this ruler. Well... <laughs> well, just go around me real slow. It's, um... Exactly two and a quarter. Two and a quarter? Two and a quarter rulers. That's, uh, 27 inches. 27 inches? For my chest? Don't you think I better take off a half inch for where I went around the corner? <laughs> The only thing is, Homer, my thigh was 27, too. You mean my thigh is as big as my chest? It is. Wait, Homer, I don't want to mislead anyone. Listen, Henry, what is it you're sending for? Nothing, Homer. Gee whiz, why would I... Do you know whether Nancy Adams has a class here next period? Sure. I thought you were ignoring her. I am. That's why I'm waiting to return this book. When I hand it to her, it's going to end everything. Well, let me see that letter just for a second, will you, Henry? Homer, don't you see what's printed right at the top of it? Strictly confidential. What does that question at the bottom mean? What question? Do you have flat feet? <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, Homer, that just shows how your imagination works. Well, what did it say then? Keep quiet, Homer. Miss Watson just came into the room. Miss Watson? Well, boys, you certainly look busy. We, we are, Miss Watson. You working on your biology? Well, in a way we are. Well, now, isn't that fine? You know we're going to start working on mice next week. We are? On mice? <laughs> yes, we're going to compare their development with that of man. What's that? Come on, Henry. That's the end of the period. There's a class coming in. Hello, Henry. What are you doing in here? Well, well, I'll tell you, Nancy, I've been waiting. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been filling out. I, I, I've been... Henry, you're getting ink all over yourself. I am? Here's a blotter. Uh, well, Nancy, I... I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed this book. Oh, I'm awfully glad you returned it, Henry, because Bill Turner is anxious to get it. He is? Are you sure you're through with it? Oh, yeah. After all, even if I weren't through with it, naturally, if Bill wants the book... Where have you been for the last week? Just around. Just around every place. Hey, Henry, come on. You go ahead, Homer. I may be held up here a second. Why, please? Oh, you better go, Henry. I just wanted to tell you, though, how much I enjoyed your book. Henry Aldrich. Don't you have a class this period? Yes, Miss Watson. I'm on my way right this minute. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye. Boy, is Nancy a good-looking girl, Henry. Do you think she's so good-looking? I think she's terrific. Well, the way I think of her, she's good-looking, but I wouldn't ever want to... Henry, wanna... let me have a look at that letter, will you? What letter? About your flat feet. Now, Homer, listen. <laughs> Homer. Homer, where is that letter? I haven't got it. Homer, I put it in this Latin book. I put it right here in the ablative absolute section. Well, don't look at me. I didn't even touch your letter. Do you suppose I put it in Nancy's book? You did. Well, why would she be interested in your flat feet? Oh, I didn't know I put them there. I mean, the letter there. I was just talking to her, and I may have just stuck it in there. Well, Homer, I've got to get that letter. Why? I think I want a thing like that to be read publicly by Nancy? Well, you certainly can't get it now, Henry. Maybe they haven't started class yet. Well, I'm not going in with you. I don't want the whole class to look at me. Be quiet, Homer. I'm going back in and get that letter. Will you all get your pencils, please? I beg your pardon, Henry Aldrich. Is there something we can do for you? Why, uh, uh, Miss Watson, I'm sorry to interrupt your lesson like this, but 
I just returned Nancy to a book. Uh, I mean, I mean, the Nancy's desk has something in it I'd like. The one. I mean, me. Well, is it anything you can't do without for the rest of the period? Well, yes, ma'am. I just have to have it. Well, if it won't take more than a second, you may go to her desk and get it. Thank you, Miss Watson. In the meantime, will all of you be copying what's written on the board here? Quiet, <laughs> quiet, Nancy. Henry, what on earth is it you want? I'd like to borrow that book again. But Henry, you didn't have to come all the way back into class and embarrass me. But I just happen to remember. I, I haven't finished it. I thought you said you had finished it. So did I. It's like I don't know Henry, hall. will you hurry, please? Yes, Miss Watson. Sure, Henry. Thanks very much. Uh, Henry, may I ask what book that is? Uh, this book I just got from Nancy? Yes. Well, it's... It's just a book. What is the title? <laughs> Rita's Revenge. <laughs> and that is the book you were in so much of a hurry to get. Well, I'll tell you, it isn't the story I'm so anxious yeah, to I get. The book, please. <laughs> the whole book? The whole book. <laughs> Couldn't I take just one look? Please don't open it. No? May I have it, please? Yes, Miss Watson. And I should like to see Nancy Adams immediately after class. But Miss Watson, Henry, she... Henry, will you please leave this classroom? Yes, Miss Watson. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> We'll come back to the Aldridge family in just a moment. Sundays on this station are really full of top radio shows, but I'd like to tell you about just one of them, Theater Guild on the Air. For seven seasons, the Theater Guild has been bringing you the brightest stars of Broadway and Hollywood and some of the world's greatest plays. Tonight, the comedy attraction is Ring Lardner's baseball story, Elmer the Great, and your stars are Eddie Bracken and Wanda Hendricks. Now, the play concerns Elma Kane, a pitcher with the best right arm in the three-eye league but a brain which has failed to vibrate with a clear thought since birth. Now, Elmer refuses to leave Gentryville, Illinois, for the big league because he's in love with Nellie Poole, owner of the grocery where he drives the delivery wagon. But Nellie guesses his secret and fires Elmer. Well, from then on, it's all ring lard and a fun. So check your newspaper for broadcast times and tune to NBC tonight for Theater Guild on the air. You'll enjoy Elmer the Great. Now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry has decided that he needs a course in physical development. And after filling out the rather intimate questions on the application blank, he discovers that he has left the blank in a book belonging to Nancy Adams. The scene opens in Henry's school at the close of a period. Listen, Henry, this will make two classes I've missed just because of you. Homer, all you have to do is just walk up to Miss Watson's desk there, pick up Nancy's book, and walk out with it. It's as easy as pie. Are you sure Miss Watson isn't in there? No one's in there. There isn't a soul in there now. You like pie. Why don't you go in and get it? <laughs> well, gee whiz, Homer, I was going to stand here in the doorway and keep watch for you. Well, if anyone does come along, Henry, give me a signal. Clear your throat. Sure, I'll, I'll sort of cough. Okay, I'll go. That's it. Just walk right up as though you own the place. <laughs> Which book is it? The one your hand is on. This isn't it. Sure it is. Isn't that book blue? Sure, but it's uh, the advanced essence of poetry. It must be there, Homer. Well, come here and show it to me. All right. Wait a second. I'll close the door part way. If it was here, it would be here. Homer, I'm almost positive Miss Watson didn't take it with her. All right. Show it to me. Well, gee whiz, it's a book with a blue cover. A blue cover? Oh, this must be it. Yes, Miss Watson. Henry, someone's out in the hall. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Quick, Homer, duck. Have you got it? Where are we duck? Get down here beside her desk. Did they come in, Henry? No. They just closed the door. Well, come on. L let's get out of here. Not so fast, Homer. Wait until they've gone down the hall. But, Henry, I've got to get to my next class. Quiet. Open the door easy. I'm going to. It must be stuck. Let me try. Henry, this is all your fault. Now, don't get panicky, Homer. We'll get it open. How? It's locked. You're crazy. Why would anybody lock a door in broad daylight? All we have to do is throw ourselves against it. Okay. One, two, three. Don't you stand there. 
understand their homework. Help me up. I guess they locked it all right. You mean we're locked in and I can't get to solid geometry? Well, at least they didn't see us, Homer. But, Henry, I'm weak in geometry as it is. Well... Well, all we have to do is climb out that window. But what good will that do? We're way up on the third floor. Homer, stop arguing. Give me that book and let's go. Nancy, could you take these keys down to the main office, please? Yes, Miss Watson. And Nancy, if you're quite sure you won't let this book interfere with your studies anymore, you may have it. Yes, Miss Watson. I'm sorry you let Henry Aldrich have it. After all, he has much more important things to attend to than Rita's revenge. Yes, Miss Watson. He's a very nice boy, Nancy. He steers his good points. But I do wish you'd become more interested in someone who takes things just a bit more seriously than Henry does. Yes, Miss Watson. Homer, do you want to knock me off this fire escape? Well, gee whiz, Henry, we have to get out of here somehow. Don't you realize this fire escape goes right past all the second floor classrooms? It never goes below the second floor? Well, keep quiet, Henry. Suppose somebody should see us out here. Let's close the window. Now, quiet now, Henry. Be quiet. That's it. Make all the noise you can. Homer, all we have to do now is go up the fire escape to the roof. And then I suppose we just jump off. It's bound to lead to something, Homer. Come on. Have you got Nancy's book? Sure. Here, take it. Is my letter in it? I don't know. Hey, Homer. What? This isn't Nancy's book. She was, this is Miss Watson's report book. Her report book? What made you think my letter would be inside this? You said blue, so I grabbed blue. <laughs> but you should have looked, Homer. Boy, if we get caught with this, we could even, we could even be expelled. Just for having a report book? Sure. Well, you can be the one that takes it back, Henry. All we have to do is open the window and... Be sure no one's in there, Henry. No one's in there. <clears throat> she whiz. Lift, Henry. I am lifting, Homer. <laughs> Move back so I can get some leverage. What's the matter, Henry? Are you weak? Well, gee whiz, maybe I do need... Wouldn't you think I could at least open a window when it's an emergency? Boy, you're really in a fix. You've got Miss Watson's reports and Nancy's got your measurements. Sure. <laughs> and probably by this time, Nancy's read the whole thing. Come on, Homer, we've got to get off this fire escape. Boys! Boys, what are you doing up there? Who is it, Henry? What are you doing up there? It's Mr. Bradley. He's down in the courtyard. Boys! Why, well, we're just trying to open a window, Mr. Bradley. Don't you know the rules about going out on the fire escape? Are there any special rules, Mr. Bradley? What are your names? Henry. Aldridge. Oh. Homer... Brown. Who? Oh. Henry and Homer. Aldrich and Brown? Oh. Yes, sir. Go to Dallas and fire a seat and report to my office at once. Yes, sir. How would you like to have us get there, Mr. Bradley? In any way you can. <laughs> the only trouble is, Mr. Bradley. What's that? Nothing. We'll get down. <laughs> And how long have you been a student in this school, young man? About three years, Mr. Bradley. And this other young man? About three and a half, Mr. Bradley. But that was on account of the mumps right on top of the measles. I see. And you both know those fire escapes were placed there for emergency use only? Well, the fact is, Mr. Bradley... It wasn't what... enough that you were out on a fire escape. You climbed in a window and broke right into the middle of Professor Vanderhoff's French class. Well, you see, Mr. Bradley, it was the only way we could get off the fire escape. Professor Vanderhoff's window was open and... Homer, we... must you lean on my desk? No, sir, excuse me. I thought you were through with us. I don't know whatever gave you that impression. Excuse me, but can I interrupt you, Mr. Bradley? You're Bill Turner, aren't you? Yes, I'm the one that carried three men over our goal Saturday. And what were you sent in here for? Well, I suppose I shouldn't have been reading this book during study hour, Mr. Bradley. What's the title? Rita's Revenge. <laughs> Rita's Revenge. I see. <clears throat> Henry. Yes, Mr. Bradley. What do you think of a boy who would spend his time reading a book like that? Well, I guess it's pretty bad, Mr. Bradley. That's what I say. I see. 
Do you know what I think all three of you boys need? No, sir. Suppose you wait here, all of you, while I step out and get your record. Yes, sir. Bill, where did you get that book? From Nancy. And what business is it of yours? Listen, Bill, could I borrow it a second? Nancy's book? All I want to do is take it for just one second. What for? I just want to... I just want to... Can't you even let me look at it? Keep your hands off. Let me have that. Keep away, do you hear me? Hey, Henry, look at what fell out of it. There's your letter right in the floor. Gee whiz. Bill Turner, you take your foot off that. You make me. Do you hear me? Take your foot off that letter. Henry, somebody's coming. I don't care. Mr. Bradley, Mr. Oxenesson. Henry. Hello, Nancy. Close the door. Let go of my leg, Aldrich. You lift your leg, do you hear me? <laughs> lift it. Boy, stop it. <laughs> lift his leg, Henry. I need more leverage. Hey, Bill, come out. You're twisting my head. Yeah? Bill Turner, you stop that. Darn you, Bill. There. Henry. Gee, Henry, you knocked him out. Oh, boy. You lifted him right off the floor. Hey, what happened? Oh, he's all right, Henry. Pick him up before Mr. Bradley comes in. Come on, Homer. Let's lift him onto the couch. Oh. Listen, Aldrich, what did you hit me with? I just used my bare hands. Didn't I, Nancy? Now then, young man. Turner, did anyone invite you to lie down on that couch? <laughs> no, Mr. Bradley. I'll help him up, Mr. Bradley. Don't you think he can get up himself? Well... I'm up. Well, young lady? Oh, uh, Miss Watson asked me to bring her keys down here. I'll take them in one moment. Turner, here's what I want you to do. I want you to spend a part of each lunch hour for the next ten days picking up the papers in the corridors of this building. <laughs> On all three floors? On all three floors. And as for... How... How did Miss Watson's report book get here on my desk? On your desk, Mr. Bradley? Nancy, will you see that she gets it back? Yes, sir. Now then, Aldrich and Brown. Yes, Mr. Bradley? Yes, Mr. Bradley? I'm sending you to the gym instructor. He needs a couple of huskies like you two to help him move the steel lockers. Move them? Yes, Henry. <laughs> Aren't there quite a few, Mr. Bradley? There are 350. It will take every afternoon for the next two weeks. Gee whiz! That's all right, Homer. You heard what Mr. Bradley said. They need a couple of huskies like you and me. Aldrich, what's that you're tearing up? Nothing. It's just sort of a letter I've decided I won't need anymore. <laughs> A radar network to detect the approach of planes can't do the entire job of protecting our country from a devastating surprise air attack. That's up to us as individual citizens. Right now, the Air Defense Command needs 300,000 more volunteers for its ground observer corps. Both men and women from teenage up can contribute a few hours of their time each week and perform a valuable service to our country. Write up on your nearest Civil Defense Center or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C. Uh, well, gee. Well, oh, gee. Henry Aldrich, look at that window. That's what I mean, Nancy. No matter what I touch these days, it crumbles right in my hand. <laughs> The Aldrich Family is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Henry is played by Bobby Ellis and Homer by Johnny Fiedler. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. Your announcer is Dick Dudley. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with The Aldrich Family. Good night, everybody. <laughs>